the 1980s in Britain was a time of uh, great change, great uh, political and cultural change in, in the country. And uh, Scotland and Glasgow was no different. They were going through a, a huge change. Glasgow was trying to move away from its image of no mean city and, uh, you know, try and uh, rebrand itself as, you know, something a bit more positive. So there was a campaign in the city called Glasgow Smiles Better, which was started to try and sort of uh, show Glasgow in a, you know, a more, a more cultural, enlightened light. And uh, that led up to 1988 and the Glasgow Garden Festival. Glasgow Garden Festival was part of a whole rejuvenation of the city uh, programme. And it was, it was set up to try and kickstart a uh, cultural change and, uh, you know, uh, sort of, um, a positive spin on the city and try and attract investment and inspire people to you know uh, to look after their city and, and 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 sell it to the world in a different light so and it really did work it was very successful and uh, so successful that in by 1990 Glasgow was awarded European City of Culture so it's with that in mind and that backdrop that we look at this uh, 80s kit that we've created here in the Open Museum it's very difficult to put the 1980s in a box so we, we don't, we just try and show a reflection of the 1980s, a snapshot, if you like. So you have, you know, technology and you have events covered such as, you know, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, we have a piece of the Berlin Wall there or the, the Space Shuttle Challenger, which tragically, uh, you know, blew up and made all the news in the, in the 1980s. Or we have different things around, you know, coal mining and the, the miners' uh, protests. So we have here the Sonny Walkman, uh, which was actually released in the uh, late 70s, but actually uh, mass produced in the 1980s. And it was, uh, it came about because the CEO of Sony wanted to have, wanted to listen to music on long haul flights. And so uh, he instructed the, the people at Sony to come up with a, a way to do that. So they invented a small cassette player. Uh, when you plug your earphones into it and you can listen to your music in private on on uh, any kind of journey you want. So these were really incredibly popular in, in the 1980s. And similarly with video games, you know, everything becomes handheld all of a sudden. Nintendo did the same in the, the late 1980s. 1989, they released the Game Boy. And it, was, it wasn't the first handheld electronic game, but it was the first time the electronic game that you could swap games with. You could play different games, Tetris, Mario, and all those ones. You just insert the cartridge, switch it on, bing, and you're away. And you could be playing your video games on the move as well. Uh, these were, this was the way technology was going. Everything was shrinking down and, and becoming portable and uh, trying to fit in with our lifestyles. And of course, you can't talk about the 1980s without uh, the Rubik Cube. Uh, Again, you know, uh, was very popular little handheld puzzle you, you would do, and uh, could see, be seen around playgrounds all across Britain and the world in the 1980s. And if you could do this, you would be the most popular kid in your school, I guarantee it. Okay, what we have here is a, a time capsule uh, that was buried by a primary school in Glasgow in 1987. And it was dug up again in 2017, 30 years later, and some of those children who were part of creating this time capsule were actually parents of children at the school in 2017. So it was a very generational project, a very 80s generational project. And we're gonna have a look at some of the things that the kids put in there. There's a whole load of stuff. One of the pieces here that today was a big thing in school education was about uh, dental and, and uh, dental care and health and, and that would, came in the form of uh, fluoride tablets which you, you used to have to chew and, and, and suck on when you were a kid uh, which you don't get anymore because there's enough fluoride in the water now and uh, also you had at that time uh, free school milk and they came in these little cartons here as well again in the 1980s this, this was stopped by one of the governments and uh, it was, uh, but in the 80s you got free school milk and they also gave out like these little dental care packages which was a tooth, toothbrush and toothpaste in here you know, to help out with your, your, your teeth hygiene. Another thing we've got here is uh, children's accounts of what you could buy for a pound in 1987 and they thought that would be interesting to people uh, now and it is and they've, they've also included 
uh, the coins of the time and even the, 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 the latest, which was a two pound coin, actually released as a commemorative item. And of course you had pound notes in those, those days as well. So there's the pound note there. So just come a quick look and see what could you buy for a pound. And you know, uh, the kids have written out little various things in here. So you could have uh, a Mars bar for 19 pence. You could have uh, football stickers, 12p, games, 99p, uh, comics, 30 pence, pencil case, rubbers, Things that are important to the children at the time. Orange juice, 18 pence. Packet of chew, it's 10p. There you go. Only 10p for those. So these are an interesting little snapshot of what kids thought were important in the 1980s and was important to them. So we're here at the Riverside Museum and we're at the toy shop here. And this is an 80s toy shop we're standing next to. And inside the 80s toy shop, what else would we have but Star Wars? And Star Wars toys... Uh, were first released in 1977. Uh, the, 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 a company called Kenner had the manufacturing rights for that toy and they signed that deal just a month before the film was released so they didn't know it was going to be the global phenomenon that it was. They just took a risk on it. That risk paid off massively but it also was to their detriment because they couldn't get the toys out in time for the Christmas market in 1977. So they actually sent out thousands and thousands of empty boxes to children with a note in it saying you're going to get the toy when it's released. Just imagine that on Christmas morning waking up to the box and being excited and there was nothing in it apart from a little promise from a company. But they did, they actually uh, met their promise and they did send all the toys on and kids got certificates saying that they had the first one off the the, the factory line and things like that. So it was, uh, uh, they sold originally for $1.97 which was even cheap even then for those toys. And the first of the line that came out was Chewbacca, Princess Leia and R2-D2. Those are the original uh, Kenner toys. They were produced from 1977 right up to the end of uh, 1985 when the last Star Wars, or the original trilogy Star Wars films were made. And if you've got any of the toys within that period then definitely look them out because you might have something quite special. Also within the toy shop we have a range of video games. And some of these, you know, people won't instantly recognise as like you know when you normally think about retro games you might be thinking about you know old nintendo games or atari games but these are actually uh, home computer games now the home computer industry in the 1980s was the industry that saved video games because there was a huge crash around about 1983 84 in the video games industry when big companies like atari went uh, went bust and there was a sort of glow in the industry for a year or two where not a lot was being produced and there was, it was also seen that that, that was the bubble burst and that the fad was dead. Companies like Commodore brought out Commodore 64 and uh, uh, companies like Sinclair brought out the Sinclair Spectrum. And these were very popular home video games that worked on cassettes. And these are some of the cassette tapes up here you can see and they mass produced thousands and thousands of games for it and they became really popular and the one thing they became known for is the long loading screens of these games where there was a, a screen that was and it took you five minutes you can make a cup of tea and come back you know there wasn't that instant gratification of putting a cartridge in you had to really earn your weight to play your video game but these were massive and 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 and, and of course uh, Sinclair were the ones who produced the famous Sinclair C5 car as well. And so here we have the famous Sinclair C5, conceived by Sir Clive Sinclair, who uh, had originally uh, was an inventor in the 1980s. And so it was a one-person vehicle, uh, ma manufactured in 1985, and they mass-produced about 14,000 of these originally. So this was a a cycle with an electric battery. And it was released in great, great fanfare in, in 1985, but they, they got a really hard time from the British media who kind of saw it as a bit of a joke. And it became the butt of many a joke and it was uh, treated with uh, a little bit of, uh, as a little bit of a kind of novelty item. However, Sinclair was very serious about this and about, about, about cutting down on pollution. And you know, this, this is like, you know, 30 years ago. So only 5,000 of the original 14,000 that were on the production line were sold, uh, were ordered in advance. So uh, it was deemed a bit of a failure. 
and uh, production was cut back by 90% and eventually stopped altogether. Uh, after the first couple of years of production, it no longer you could no longer buy one and they became uh, very collectible and very rare. They had a top speed of about 15 miles an hour. You steered it with a handlebars that were underneath your legs and you pedaled if you, your battery w w was dead. The only thing, one of the things that held it back was it didn't have a reverse. In order to uh, reverse, you had to climb out of it, pick up the front, turn it round, and off you went. You can see why maybe it failed.